On today's Locked On Texan podcast, we continue with our training camp thoughts. We look at how Pip Hamilton is getting creative with this offense, and we look at some matchup problems for this Houston Texan offense, including the red zone, and then we're going to end off the show with our early thoughts on Saturday's preseason game against the New Orleans Saints. But, Cody, it's Tuesday. Take off and start the show. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to a Tuesday edition of the Locked On Texan Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm John Hickman, joined by Cody Davis. No practice for the Houston Texans on Monday. But, however, there may be some light at the end of the tunnel. Or maybe they done something a little bit better, I think so. Whenever you go to professional sporting events, whether that's <laughs> NFL, MLB, NBA, hockey, if you're in the colder area, or soccer, if you're down here trying to catch out the dynamo, those prices for food can get ridiculous. <laughs> uh, and they're checking every bag. They're checking every pocket. They're checking every sock. I got so many tricks in my sleeve that they are checking. Now, there's only one place that I put it <laughs> in the sun don't shine, but I don't want to eat it after that. Uh, but the Houston Texans, they've heard all of our cries, tears, making things more affordable for the fan experience, and that's exactly what they did. The Houston Texans unveiled fan-first deals to elevate game day experience for the fans with a total average of 20% decrease on four of the most ordered concession items. So now your hot dog is going to go from $5.50 to $3.75. Your soda is going to go from nearly $5 down to $3.75. Your chicken tender basket, which is my personal favorite of food items, that's going to go down from $10 to $7.75. And we're from Texas, so we all like a good cold beer. Your 16-ounce domestic beer will go down from nearly $9 to $7.95. And so that took a dip. I love that. These are one of the many things that is, you know, as bad as it's been in the past, this Hmm. is one of the many things this franchise has been doing to rebuild their relationship. And I also will go as far as saying establish a new bridge in that relationship as well. However, you guys come to us for training camp. We're going to talk about training camp, Pep Hamilton, and what you've been seeing, Cody, out of a Pep Hamilton called offense. This is his second year with the Houston Texans, first year as OC. I do think that we're going to see uh, somewhat of the flashes of the 2013-2014 Indianapolis Colts offense. Mm. What have you been seeing so far from Pep Hamilton as a play caller that favors the Houston Texans heading into the season. And John, I find it a little bit ironic that later on in the show, we're going to talk about some early expectations that we have for the Texans as we head closer to this first preseason game against the Saints on Saturday. And I said that because, look, if you give me an opportunity, I kind of want to jump into it as of right now because in terms of expectations and in terms of what I'm seeing out of Pep Hamilton as this team offensive coordinator, I would like to say that that I truly believe in this very first preseason game, we're going to see an a, a offense that is actually going to be promising in 2022. And I say that because, look, with Pep Hamilton at the helm as this team offensive coordinator, I do believe that we're going to get two things that we always wanted to see out of a Houston Texans offense. One, an offense that is entertaining And two, and most importantly, an offense that is actually going to put points on the board. And John, I know you hate this word, but I would like to say is we are going to see an offense that is going to be a little bit more exotic other than the vanilla style offense, in your word, that you you have been referring to over the last two seasons. Now, look, let me just say this. Throughout the first couple of days of training camp, this is what I'm noticing about a Pep Hamilton-led offense. First and foremost, John, you can attest to this. We're going to see an offense that is going to use motion a lot. We're going to see an offense, and I think this is really big because 
when John Mechie went down, there was this big cry on who's going to step up as this team primary slot receiver. I would like to say throughout these first couple of days of training camp, I don't think the Houston Texans are going to have a primary slot receiver. They're going to utilize a lot of different guys at that position. And in terms of an exotic offense, I would like to mention that we're going to see an offense that has experience with jet sweeps, especially utilizing Chris Moore and Philip Dorsett, flea flickers. Remember, that was really big last year in terms of one of the best plays that we saw out of the Houston Texans going back to the 2021 campaign in the loss against the New England Patriots. Remember, the last touchdown they scored in that game was a flea flicker between Rex Burkhead, Davis Mills, touchdown pass to Chris Conley. They have experimented with that a lot. And the last thing that I want to mention, Pep Hamilton, ever since he took over as the offensive coordinator, this is a guy who said that he is going to call plays and create a scheme that is going to be it's, it's going to play in the hands of the strength of his players, especially his quarterback in Davis Mills. And in terms of this last option that I'm going to talk about, the read option, I'm seeing that a lot out of Davis Mills this year. And that is very important because, look, Titus Howell said this last year that Davis Mills is, quote unquote, sneaky athletic. And no, Davis Mills is not a quarterback that is going to beat you with his legs. However, if there is an opportunity for this team to pick up an additional yard, an additional two, additional three yards to get the first down or whatever the case might be, Davis Mills do have that type of athleticism that can actually work in the Houston Texans' favor. I would like to say this. I mean, you may call Pip Hamilton's offense exotic, but I just think it's up to date. And <laughs> that's something that this uh, this franchise has needed, I think, an up-to-date offensive mind. And remember that 2014 year with the Colts where they just simply exploded offensively with Andrew Luck. Now, I'm not calling Davis Mills Andrew Luck, but back to your tight end point, Cody, uh, when we go off based off numbers from last year, tight ends lined up in the slot 15.5% of their pay plays that they were targeted. And then when we also look at what some of the uh, top tight ends were able to do in the league last year, Mark Andrews, 52%, Travis Kelsey, 37 uh, Dalton Shorts, 30%. So they are being utilized more in the slot. And when you look at somebody who's big and athletic like Reverend Jordan, that'll work out, Cody. But another part of this game that I'm loving about Pep Hamilton right now it's not only is he fishing for the favorable matchups, that's something that we've seen a lot throughout the entire training camp. We're hearing about a lot of guys having good camps because they're just in the best position that they need to be in. But we also got to look at the fact that Brandon Cooks was, he had over 90, yard, 90 catches last year. Nobody else had over 33 catches. And I think this offense will be a little bit more balanced. I think this offense will be a little bit more balanced in terms of maybe getting the ball to your running backs more often maybe dumping the ball off to your tight ends much more often. And then just you don't have a superstar, a proven superstar playmaker outside of Brandon Cooks that we know of as of yet. And so guys are going to have to prove themselves, make plays whenever your time is called. And that is what we've seen so far in training camp. Right? When we look at we look at Brevin Jordan and Farrell Brown going head-to-head, -head, it's because those guys are being put in matchups that favor their skill set. And so I, I, mainly I think that with Pep Hamilton's offense, which I can't wait to see on Saturday, we're going to see guys just be favored more than what we saw last year. Remember, Davis Mills said that he had to work more in a Tim Kelly's offense compared to hmm. with Pep Hamilton, you know, the offense and the game kind of comes to him. But if you guys haven't tried the Bill Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's current greatest joys, there's also a new flavor, delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. Bill Bar has done it again. Run to build.com to snag a box for you and the family. It's a perfect treat. You can really find a good hiding place for them or just kind of hoard them all to yourself. Don't share them. Don't give anybody anything. What's great about Bill Bar 
is that all of their bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides a ton of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you as well. Go to build.com, use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at build.com. Welcome back, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers out there. Thank you for checking out today's show. Once again, Texans did not have practice on Monday. Got them a rest day ahead of Saturday night's preseason game against the New Orleans Saints at 7 o'clock. Go ahead and try to get you some of those uh, tickets as well. They're kind of cheap out there. You know, Cody, there is a gym that I think this team possesses right now. Before I say this, guys, I don't think this team is going to be lightning, lightening up on offense. I don't think we're going to see them hover around 28, 29 points per game. I'm not getting to that, but I do think we'll get more than the what, 16.8 from last year, something along those lines. Most where they definitely. Rally scored. They have a height problem for the Houston hmm. Texans. And it's a good thing, right? When I look at Jalen Camp, he's 6'2". Chris Conley, he's 6'3". Nico Collins, he's 6'4". Brevin Jordan, 6'3". Farrell Brown, 6'6". And Tiki Quatoriano, he's also 6'6". During the training camp, I've been finding that Mills has been doing a good job of finding those bigger targets in the end zone or just to move the chains consistently if they need to pick up a possession due to the ability to simply exploit the smaller Defender like the Nico Collins catch over Steven Nelson or the Chris Conley catch over Fabian Moreau, which that was a phenomenal catch. And that happened, mm. I think, right after I was talking a lot of noise about. Yeah, it, it happened the next day. It, it happened, happened the next, next day. day. And, and, and listen, <laughs> I just want to see it more <laughs> often. But both of those, in their own Twitter, both of those catches were passes by Davis Mills that, again, one of my favorite attributes of him is being able to you know, kind of place the ball where it needs to be. That was one thing that I really enjoyed watching him do last year and picked it up on early. Uh, but he's only placing the ball to where the bigger receiver or the tight end can go and grab it. I think we might see a lot of jump balls this year in Houston, and that is a weapon that I think this team possesses offensively. When we got in the red zone here in Houston last season, it was difficult for him. I don't think there was a clear plan on what to do and how to execute it. Above all of what Tim Kelly, I'm sorry, Pep Hamilton has been able to do in training camp so far, I think the discipline that we've seen out of this offense has been much more. I think the reason why, ladies and gentlemen, is because there's not a lot of false starts. There's not a lot of guys missing the assignment on offense, whether it's a running back or a, a, a wide receiver not running the right route. They have looked completely different from last year in terms of being disciplined and I do hope that plays out and benefits them in special teams. But back to the height, that is a weapon they can use. And that is part of the reason why, and it kind of goes back to a conversation that we had last week, that is that is part of the reason why I do believe that Nico Collins has an opportunity to take the helm as this team's number one wide receiver, and that is also part of the reason why I can see Pharaoh Brown being this team's number one tight end throughout six, six. this entire, exactly, he's 6'6", six, six, throughout this entire campaign and and john you know you talk about the hype but we'll also get lost in all this it's the talent you know I, i'm looking at this from a standpoint of it seems like for the first time in over the last two seasons that the houston texans found a way to get everything that they are looking for all the qualities all the characteristics everything that they are looking for to build their idea of an nfl team they 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 has it as, they have it as of right now through these first couple of days of training camp you're talking about culture guys you're talking about guys with size you're talking about guys who can go out there and run the ball with a pur purpose remember just yesterday we talked about how better this backfield has looked and in terms of the Houston Texans improving their scoring, they're going to have an opportunity to exploit these matchups. As a matter of fact, and I'm going to run this again, just listen to what Coach Lovey Smith had to say about the catch that Nico Collins had over Steven Nelson last week. Well, that's tough duty for a defensive back. Steve, you know, the one play that you're talking about, 
defensively, Steve Nelson is in pretty good position. But when you're, you know, 6'4", most corners are around six feet. Uh, that's a pretty good matchup for us. Nico Collins is an excellent football player. We expect him to make plays like that. John, to your point, especially going back to everything that we talked about in the first segment in terms of what we are expecting out of a Pep Hamilton offense, I do believe this is part of the reason why, another reason why we're going to see a better version of the Texans offense in 2022 because, look, size is going to always play a factor on the football field but especially more so when you get into the red zone this is an organization that only scored in the red zone 51 percent of the time which was ranked 27th in the league i'm definitely expecting that number to increase i'm not going to sit here and say that i'm expecting the houston texans to be one of the best red zone teams in the league this year but i do believe that they're going to punch the end zone a lot more often in 2022 especially when you have guys and, and better versions of nico collins Pharaoh brown even anthony o'clair another guy who is standing 6 6. i think what we're seeing right now from this offense during training camp cody we talked about favorable matchups. Right now we're talking about the size and how that is a weapon. I think that we're seeing a more clear and decisive plan of what this offense should be and how you're able to exploit matchups. I think that's, you know, one way to put it. Also, I think that we're looking at a bunch of these players that for the first time they're being used in their better skill set, right? Nico Collins, he's, He's 6'4", he runs a 4'4", and he's, and he's 215, he can come down with it. We're going to see some jump balls this year, right? You got Farrell Brown, who's just massive. He's a huge human being. At the very least, you can scheme him up to where he can get you five to seven yards. That's what we're seeing. I, I think that's a clear plan, and that's been throughout training camp. If you're living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, it can be really stressful when unexpected expenses come up. Now Dave can help you get out of a pinch when you really need it. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, spend at the Houston Texans NRG concession stands. There's no credit check. There's no interest. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get financial relief they need with extra cash. That's Dave app. Download it right now at the App Store. That is D-A-V-E. Sign up for extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve and member FDIC. Thanks for making Locked On Texans your first listen today. Now make your second listen to Locked On Fantasy Football. Make that your second listen of the day. Find the intellectual fantasy experts who brings over 20 years of NFL expertise and a unique angle to give you the moves no one else has or talking about. Get ready for your fantasy draft. A locked on fantasy football expectations, early expectations before Saturday's preseason game against the Saints. What I want to see and what I expect to see this first game is going to be a trial and error run for all of the things that they're implementing into this offense. I think mm -hmm. this will be a trial and error run for Lovey Smith to get creative with his defense. That's something that we'll touch on probably on tomorrow's show. When we talked about safety alignment, but because we don't expect for this defense to just be a plain, you know, cover two, Tampa two defense. We don't expect that. We expect for him to utilize those strengths of the players. And so I think if guys are healthy enough to play, they should play, especially if you're a year two, year one, you know, rook, year three guy. I can understand some veterans missing time. I get it. Or if you're, you know, nursing a player back to full strength like a Derek Stingley, I understand it. So that's a part of my expectations. And I want to see how this team responds to getting punched in the mouth. Like right off the bat, I want to see how you respond. I want to see if the energy is really different if the discipline is really different from last year. And I really want to see Davis Mills play football. Not because I'm a fan, but because, you know, you have full command over this offense now. There hasn't been a real question 
since you took over the, the last time till now, are we going to see some of those same question marks? Or, you know, we're going to clean some things up. He'll look better throughout the game. Is, you know, see how long he's out there. But that, those are my expectations, early expectations for Saturday's matchup. And then later in the week, I'll give you some real concrete expectations. Um, John, I, I agree with you. My one expectation, and this is an expectation I know I'm not going to get, I definitely want to see the majority of the Houston Texans' main players play. Because, look, at the end of the day, yes, this is a team that, that, that does have veterans. This is a team who do have promising young players especially promising second year and third year players however this is also a team that has only won eight games over the last two seasons and this is also a team that went four and 13 last year which means outside of the likes of brandon cooks laramie tonsil titus howard kamu guje hill um christian kirk kersey um of course you know veteran guys like malik collins mario addison if you're not part of that core that I just mentioned, I want to see you guys suit up and play, including Davis Mills, especially in terms of Davis Mills still learning a new playbook led by Pep Hamilton. However, a more realistic expectation that I'm definitely going to keep my eyes on in this first preseason game, I really do believe that the wide receiving battle between Jalen Camp, Chad Beebe, and Johnny Johnson the third is really going to start heating up after this first preseason game. Those are Connor three Wellington guys. Too. No, Con Connor Wellington too. That's yeah. another guy. See, he's, he's all he's he's, he's, he's already play. slipping my mind. You know, those are four wide receivers who have put together a really good camp up to this point. All four of those wide receivers can be utilized in different ways. As a matter of fact, in terms of Chad Beebe, you are looking at an individual that's going to be heavily utilized if he makes a 53-man roster in terms of being part of special teams. But all four of these guys, they have made a case as of right now as to why they should be on this 53-man roster. But now it's time to see, okay, you, shake, you showcase what you can do in practice. Now can that transition over into when the lights are bright? Because at yeah. the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good those four wide receivers look. It doesn't matter how good Davis Mills look, John Grenard, Nico Collins. A lot of these guys that we've been hyping on the show, at the end of the day, is what you can do for this organization for four quarters. Not just in preseason, but of course in regular season as well. But first preseason game, I'm definitely going to keep my eyes on this wide receiving core. I would also throw in Chris Conley, man. They're paying you $2 million this year. That's <laughs> worth something. So but thank you guys for checking out today's episode of the Locked On Texans. Be sure to find us and subscribe to us on YouTube under Locked On Texans. Follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12. And as always, I'm your host, Cody Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody, C-O-T-Y, D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.